As enterprises continue their digital transformation with the relentless march to the cloud, they continue to embrace the Cloud Data Warehouse, or CDW, as part of their architecture. Along with this technology adoption, enterprises are embracing the Extract, Load, Transform, or ELT design pattern, which allows the enterprise to achieve faster time to value by making the data available in the CDW to all users without having to pre-design the transformations, but rather build them as needed and then use the power of the cloud to execute them. SnapLogic has developed an ELT Snap Pack. It allows the user to build visual SQL pipelines and converts the visually configured snaps in a pipeline into SQL statements and pass these statements between the snaps, nesting the SQL as additional snaps are added. Ultimately, a single fully nested SQL statement is executed in the target CDW, for example, Snowflake, commonly referred to as a pushdown optimization. If I look at the ELT snap pack, you can see the snaps that are included, initially focused around transformations. From read perspective, we have select snap. From the write perspective, we have insert select and merge into. And then all the blue ones are the transformation capabilities, such as aggregate, copy filter, intersect, join, limit, sort, union, unique, etc. As you can see, there are extensive transformation capabilities enabled by the Snap Pack. This is a simple use case to show how we can design an ELT pipeline to perform pushdown optimization. This means the transformations are performed using the capabilities of Snowflake. We will use the SnapLogic visual design paradigm to build a set of pipelines to extract, load, and transform the data. As previously mentioned, the transform pipeline will ultimately get converted to a nested SQL statement that will be fully executed in Snowflake. In this step, no data is streamed through SnapLogic Plex, but rather the SQL commands are pushed down and are executed within the warehouse. In this use case, I want to find out the total sales order amount per customer. I extract the customer and related sales data from Salesforce and write it to an interim table within Snowflake that is hosted on Amazon S3. I then load the raw data from the interim table into Snowflake tables, perform the necessary transformations, and write the result to an output table. I've built a set of pipelines that perform the three steps, extract, load, and transform stages, and I join them together using an orchestration pipeline. In this demo, we will focus on the transformation capabilities. Now, let's take a look at the transformation pipeline. In the transformation step, I have two branches of my pipeline that read the respective tables from Snowflake, the customer and order tables. If I open up the select snap and click on accounts, it will show you the account credentials. This will show the select snap, account configuration. Choose the appropriate JDBC driver for Snowflake. Enter in your specific JDBC URL and associated login credentials, username and password. Choose Snowflake from the dropdown. In the initial release, Snowflake is supported. Other CDW will be added in future releases. I then enter in your warehouse and database names. I can click on Validate to ensure my details are correct. Now that I have configured the account, I can configure the database, schema, and tables I want to read. You can see that the SNAP supports the ease of use capabilities as other SNAPs such as the Suggest functionality. Click on the button to query the database and display all the schemas or tables. Now let's discuss Selective Preview. You will see a Get Preview Data checkbox. This is disabled by default, but if I have this enabled and I validate the pipeline and view the preview data, you will see two things. One is the SQL that was generated for this SNAP configuration, and the other is the actual data from the table specified. This Get Preview Data checkbox allows the developer to choose where in the pipeline they want to retrieve the actual data from Snowflake. Enabling this causes the SQL to be executed in Snowflake and will consume credits, hence the reason why it is disabled by default. Each snap in this pack follows the same convention. If I open up the join snap, you can see we support various different join types. If I open up the aggregate snap, you can see the various aggregation functions we support. Finally, in the insert select snap, you have the option to overwrite the data in the table. 
The insert select is the snap that triggers the full execution of the nested SQL within Snowflake. If I execute the pipeline, you will see the commands that get executed in Snowflake. If I open up Snowflake, I can see the exact SQL statement that was pushed from SnapLogic to Snowflake to perform the orders per customer transformation. This is a quick overview of the SnapLogic ELT capabilities. Thanks for watching this video. For more details about the ELT feature, please visit snaplogic.com.